Adobe Muse is yet another attempt by software developers to come up with a way of allowing graphic designers to design websites in the way that the designers like to design websites. Um, designers don't want to know about code, or well, some do, but large numbers of them just think it's beneath them to have anything to do with it whatsoever and want to be able to use skills that they've gleaned from their desktop publishing programs like InDesign and Quark Express to be able to lay out pages in a way that they think is intuitive. So the Muse Beat has come along proposing that Vegas can make this the case. I've downloaded a copy, um, I've looked around the menus in it for about five to ten minutes. I've got an idea about how to use it, but I haven't read, I haven't studied any of their document, documentation. I just want to plunge straight in and see how it would be for a graphic designer to approach making a website using the skills that they, they've already got. That's my initial concern. After that, I put on my web designer head, head and think, well, how compatible is this stuff? How does this code fit together? How easy is it going to be able to publish this code and maintain it? Is the code quality? So these are my concerns, and that's what I'm going to look at in this short screencast. So here I am at the Muse start screen. I've got a start create new option here, so I'm going to create a new site. I get something very reminiscent of the InDesign uh, document dialog box. Let's go and set this up to our 800 pixel wide site. I'll put in a four column grid. I don't really know what this means as a, as a graphic designer in terms of a web page, but I'll leave those things and say OK. And I'm dropped into Muse's plan mode. This would suggest to me that here I can start to think about creating web pages or creating the pages that I need on my site. And indeed, I can see here that if I take my cursor over the top, I get these plus icons, which I assume will yep, allow me to make new pages. So if I create some top level pages, create one more here, and I want to have some pages, some staff bios on there. So I imagine that if I click down here, I can create some child pages from the staff. Yep. And we're going to have the CEO, Flora Mayer. somebody else. So I set up some top level pages here. If I go and look at them, I can see there's nothing on any of them, but I am able to go and add content uh, in the form of uh, some type. So by clicking and dragging, you see that these very desktop publishing like boxes with tool tips. I can type in there. I can change the, the font. And it's all very much like you'd expect it to be. And we are changing the font colour. So at first glance, first glance, it certainly looks very much like a desktop publishing program. I can go and bring in graphics. Let me go and find an image here. Drop them onto the page. I can rotate them. I seem to be able to do quite a lot. But of course I want to take a more structured approach to this than just dumping stuff on pages. I want to make use of my master page to make sure that any elements that are running consistently through my site are going to be incorporated on each page. So taking the desktop publishing metaphor, if I go through to my master page, place something on it, I'm assuming this will work, and then go back and look at any of the pages derived from it, and indeed at my website there, I can see that anything plonked onto the master page is, is going to persist throughout everything else. So if I go back to the master page, delete that, and then I can look at what, uh, what I've been given here. So I've got my outside areas of the page, we've got the guides from the columns that I just created, we've got some icons here which are controlling the amount of padding areas at the top of the page, the amount of room from the top to the bottom, so I'll just lower that a little. And then we've also got a header area, so I can go and define that in the header area and the footer areas to find the areas that are going to persist at the bottom and top of each page. All well, the content will fit in the middle here and will expand as necessary. So continuing, I'm going to add a text frame. 
And I'm going to put the name of the website up at the top here, taking up three columns. I'm just going to call this uh, And then I'm going to use keyboard commands that I'd expect to work from other programs. So I just did a select all there. And I'm going to use the Adobe standard keyboard shortcut for making text bigger of uh, command shift greater than or less than or control shift less than greater than on Windows. That's working. I can kernel track the text. That's nice for a web program. That's very nice. Unusual level of control there. In terms of fonts, I seem to have a drop down menu here where I can choose from the website fonts and further down I notice that there's the option to use system fonts which will be exported as a, as a graphic. So I've just added the header bit of text and a footer there. Um, the text at the top is on a non-standard web font, so we've got this little icon which is demonstrating that that's going to be changed into a graphic on export. And I've used live HTML text down at the bottom, that's going to go and change that to the Dana and make it a bit smaller. So everything really as, as we'd expect it to be. Now if I go back to my master pages again, I can see onto the, the planning view, I can see that my master pages have updated all these uh, allied um, pages. And I'm going to go and experiment with adding some content to a specific page. So I've double clicked on home in the planning view. It's taking me into my design. I can't actually select any of these things here. It's not just because I haven't got the arrow, it's because I can't select them because they're on the master page, of course. And if I wanted to add content, I could just use the standard Adobe place command. I can go and get content, I can just go and place it on the page like so, and you notice that the footer expands as I do that, just to show how the, the footer would always go beneath the main content of any page. I can go and import text, and again I get a standard Adobe loaded cursor, so very light in design click and drag and it's just flowing the text in, pushing the page down and I can zoom in and out of the page with standard um, command plus and minus or control plus and minus. So you can see that we've created the uh, filled up the content on the page there. So let's go take that back to 100% and zoom back up to the top. I'm going to just make the width of this column wider, I'll try to. So I'm going to go and take that to being three columns wide, and let's go and see if we do. It did appear that we had some wrapping options. So here I'm going to go and try and put a text wrap on this, and that doesn't seem to work at all. I wonder what the purpose of that is. Um, no doubt when I consult the documentation later on to go and find out what this does, I'll I'll know what it's for. But at the moment, it seems to have no possible use. Um, so that's not what that was for. So not everything is as it might seem within this program.